What's up and welcome to episode 73 of the Unofficial NCLEX podcast. I am Katie Kleber and I am your host. The title of this episode is Educate Patient and Staff Regarding Infection Control Measures. So this this is pretty important. Um, everybody needs to know how to prevent infection and prevent disease transmission. Um, one of the Typically, staff has a relatively good grasp on this, the hand hygiene, the universal asepsis, or I'm sorry, universal precautions, you know, following our isolation precautions. The challenge I find, though, is with family members because it's hard, you know, explaining contact precautions and multi-drug resistant organisms and isolation That goes way over some people's heads. It's really hard to break that down into something that is an easily digestible, understandable piece of information. Um, Especially, I find especially, like I have mentioned in a previous episode, I find this especially difficult with um, patients that are isolated for like MRSA or VRE for being colonized with a specific organism but not actively infected with it. So understanding that difference is challenging as a healthcare provider, let alone as a lay person, and then communi- and then connecting that to, we want them to wear a gown and gloves, but when they go home, they're not going to wear a gown and gloves. <laughs> so it's challenging, but it's necessary. I find the best thing that I do, or the best thing that I have done that has gotten, I felt like the best response is when I find out a patient's got MRSA or VRE and I got to put them on precautions because a lot of hospitals will require you to screen that upon their arrival. I will print off whatever the appropriate educational stuff is. I'll make sure I understand and read it real quick and then I'll bring it to the family and I'll say, hey, um, Mr. Smith here and, you know, talk to the patient as well. You um, screened positive for MRSA. And so this is not an active infection. This is an organism that has colonized, meaning, um, you know, it's not something that is actively has to do with what, whatever you're admitted for. We just screen everybody for this. Um, and you can get it in various ways, which are listed on this sheet. And typically the list on the sheet is pretty extensive and they can typically pinpoint, oh yeah, she had a two month stay in rehab. Uh, after a fall or something like that. And I've had that one pretty frequently. Um, and so while Mr. Smith is here, we as the staff are going to be wearing gowns and gloves to prevent us spreading this resistant organism from him to another patient. So that is why we're going to come in here all dressed to the nines and, you know, say something kind of funny um, every time we come in here. And it's important just to protect the safety of other patients and um, and yours as well. You know, we do that for any patient uh, that, that may have this. And, and the whole history and the reason why this is a thing now and isn't 30 years ago has to essentially do with our over-prescribing antibiotics for years. Um, and there's more information about that on this sheet. We recommend that you as family wear um, gowns and gloves and use, wash your hands with soap and water before and after coming in the room. That's what we recommend that you do. Um, And and please let me know if you have any questions, you know, something like that. Um, But it's really important to do, provide very practical education and trying to break it down in a way that makes the most sense. So, and that, and that is challenging. So I want to encourage you too that if this is like, oh, I don't know, oh, great, they're on MRSA and precautions and I don't even know how to explain it to them because I kind of don't understand it myself. You know, I actually had a, a um, infection prevention person at our hospital really explain to me the difference between um, MRSA that's colonized and an active MRSA infection. And that and that's something that, you know, we don't treat colonized MRSA unless someone is having maybe open heart surgery or some very serious surgery because it's not necessary to treat. Um, and having people understand that is, is just challenging. So I just want to encourage you guys. It is a little frustrating, a little rough, but it's important to make sure they understand. And, the, and another aspect is when you provide this information, you better document it. You better say, hey, I talked to Mr. Smith and his wife and reinforced blank and reinforced this. And then I put in that I gave him this pamphlet. Um, Because I've had patient families 
as well where I explain all of that and maybe it is something like C. diff or something and I explain to them they understand and they don't wear the gown they don't wear the gloves and um, I have to chart that I have done that and that's all I can do you know so it's important important um, to make sure this is done it is a challenging thing to understand and explain though so that concludes episode 73 of the unofficial NCLEX podcast. Again, the title of this episode was Educate Patient and Staff Regarding Infection Control Measures. Thanks, guys. This has been another episode of the unofficial NCLEX prep podcast. To get the massive PDF guide that goes along with this podcast, head over to nrsng.com slash NCLEX prep. That's nrsng.com slash NCLEX prep. That's a free download that you can take with you anywhere. And you can basically have this podcast in text format. Our goal here at NRSNG.com is to give you the tools and the confidence that you need to succeed in nursing school, on the NCLEX, and in your life as a nurse. We want you to succeed, and we want you to become part of this movement of nurses that is dedicated and motivated to learning and becoming the best nurse that they can possibly be. My name is John Haas, RNCCRN, and I'm the founder of NRSNG.com, and I sincerely thank you for being here, and I'm so proud of you for taking this step in your journey. Now you know what time it is now. It's time to go out and be your best self today. Happy nursing.